Now, another character in the book, and again, I keep using that term character. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Even me, I'm sitting here trying to tell everyone, hey, remember these are people, but I'm calling them characters. These aren't characters in a book. These are people. Mm -hmm. And this person was named Mrs. Song. And Mrs. Song, what's interesting about Mrs. Song is she's a true believer. She's a true believer, and you're going to hear some of this, but these folks that are raised in North Korea, they just believe that, that they believe the propaganda. They believe that North Korea is the, the best place on earth and that everywhere else is suffering, mm -hmm. and that because of their great leader, their lives are better than anyone else in the world. And she truly believes that. And here's kind of what her attitude, here's what her life was like and her attitude was like. Mrs. Song usually went to work with one baby strapped to her back and one or two daughters dragging along behind her. Her children basically grew up at the daycare center. She was supposed to work eight hours with a lunch break and a nap in the middle of her shift. After work, she had to spend several more hours in ideological training in the fa factory's auditorium. One day, the lecture might be about the struggle against U.S. imperialism. Another time, it might be about Kim Il-sung's exploits, actual or exaggerating, fighting the Japanese during World War II. She had to write essays on the latest pronouncements of the Workers' Party. By the time she got home, it would be 10.30 p.m. She would do her housework and cooking, then get up before dawn to prepare herself and her family for the day ahead before leaving home around 7 a.m. She seldom slept more than five hours. Some days were harder than others. On Wednesday mornings, she had to report to work early for mandatory meetings of the Socialist Women's Federation. Friday night, she stayed especially late for self-criticism. In these sessions, members of her work unit, the department to which she was assigned, would stand up and reveal to the group anything they had done wrong. Mrs. Song would usually say, in all sincerity, sincerity, that she feared she wasn't working hard enough. Mrs. Song believed what she said. All those years of sleep deprivation, all those lectures and self-criticisms, the very same tools used in brainwashing or interrogations had wiped out any possibility of resistance. She had been molded into Kim Il-sung's improved human beings.